a special Gegolasso episode today as we discuss a lot of Italy, Serie A, and of course, opening day in MLB as we have John Morosi from MLB Network and World Series champion, former Yankees catcher Francisco Cervelli. We're going to discuss a lot, including the beautiful game and of course, celebrating a little bit of opening day. Gegolasso begins right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Que Go Lasso, another fantastic day. And I am so excited because, listen, obviously we don't have Jimmy Conrad today. We don't have a few of our usual, uh, you know, colleagues, but I am so psyched to welcome two amazing human beings. And obviously this is kind of like a fun episode, everybody, because opening day is coming soon. In fact, by the time you listen to this, it might already be there. But I wanted to have a fun thing going on because obviously CBS Sports now that we have Serie A and everything that's going on with the beautiful game in Italy, I wanted to make it something special. So first of all, I want to intro here, John Morosi, MLB Network's on-air personality analyst. John Morosi also does some serious uh, XM stuff. John, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here, my friend. Luis, è un grande piacere parlare con calcio con te. It's a, it's a great pleasure to speak a little of calcio with you and a little bit of baseball as well. I can't wait. You do such outstanding work every single day on Que Golazo. I'm a loyal listener, so it's an honor to be on the show today. John, it's an absolute pleasure. If you don't have John's work, what are you doing, especially if you're a baseball fan? But John, obviously, is a huge Italian soccer fan as well, so we'll be talking about that. But hey, guess what? It's not just John that's here. I'm really excited. My wife is like freaking out right now because we're big Yankees fans over here. All right. But Italiano, Venezolano, World Series champion with the New York Yankees in 2009, a career in MLB that went more than uh, two decades, uh, ended his career with the Marlins. But Francisco Cervelli is also here. Juventus fan, I do believe as well. So there's plenty to talk about there. Francisco, welcome to the show, my friend. Hello, hello, good morning. Well, I'm also Dominicano, Peruano, <laughs> eh, Alemán, <well>, international. <laughs> you're like uh, you're like the J Balvin Mi Gente song. You're just everybody. Everything, I love it. <laughs> everything. It's just whatever, whatever. If I wake up here, I'm from America. Okay. <laughs> Francisco, it's an absolute pleasure. John, an absolute pleasure. And everybody, we're just going to have a real fun chat today. Uh, we're going to focus, obviously, a lot on Serie A. Uh, CBS Sports obviously announcing that we have the season starting next season. Of course, I know that these two are very excited about it. But also, you know, as we're taping in the international break, Italy is doing some great things as the European Championships uh, kicks off this summer. So, John, I want to start with you for a second. How excited are you about not just Serie A and, you know, the talent over there, but also, you know, the future of the Italian national team under uh, Roberto Mancini? Well, the, the future, a arrivato. The future is here right now, I think, Luis, in that respect. And I look at the Euros this summer and say, and I loved what JJ said on the podcast earlier this week, I look for Italy to be at least in the semifinals of the Euros because you think about the other great nations around Europe that are maybe struggling a bit with their national team form at the moment, whereas Italy is young, exciting, the great streak that we've seen under Il Allenatore, Roberto Mancini, uh, and I think a lot of youth, and now finally some creativity, I believe, in the final third. We'll see if Ciro Immobile can match what he's, of course, done at the club level with the national team, but we saw Balotti get on the score sheet uh, over the weekend as well. I'm excited. This team has a lot of youth, a lot of creativity, Luis and Francisco. Francisco, my friend, I, I've got great hopes for the Azzurri this summer and in 2022 as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, be, I'm, I'm very excited uh, with what I've been seeing, uh, especially, you know, Italy, uh, they, they, they touch the floor when they didn't qualify in the last World Cup. And sometimes those kind of things have to happen because they, and, uh, they always relay on the veterans. And... Uh, and then they, they wake up and say, well, we don't have any more players. We need to start from the beginning. And then um, especially stay with the same um, allenatore, el, 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 the same trainer, the same coach, because it, it takes time. And what I'm seeing in the middle field with Italy, because the strikers right now, you know, is trying to figure out Immobile, of course, and, and Belotti, probably Moises King. But what I'm seeing in the middle field is it's amazing the the 
it's not only pass the balls, they can score goals too. Yeah, absolutely right. I think uh, let's stick on that midfield situation. And by the way, uh, if you're listening to this, we're taping before Italy's last uh, game in this international window against Lithuania. So, you know, take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, Hopefully it'll be a good result for Italy. But about that midfield, John, because listen, obviously, if you know the game, you know Mancini, you know what he's done for the game. But he's also very specific about not just, you know, being entertaining, but he loves to contain everything. He wants to control that middle. And I'm looking at Verratti, Sensi, Varela. I mean, this is a real powerful uh, team. And to Francisco's point, sometimes there was always an over-reliance on age and experience. But now it's like, this is a dynamic Italy. This is a young Italy. This is a fun Italy. And an Italy that doesn't have their talent just in Serie A. It's like everywhere. And I think that's a major point, especially when you're facing against the likes of, you know, the Netherlands, Spain, England, France, et cetera. Uh, what do you make of that? A very good point. And of course, Verratti playing for PSG. We saw in the first game against Northern Ireland of this international window, a great pass from Florenzi breaking a line and getting up to Berardi for a, a sharp angle, brilliant goal. And so a couple players who are, of course, now in Ligue 1 in France. And I think you consider not just the quality, but the depth. Too. I think you saw Mancini switching out after the first game of the international window. We saw Sensi come in and Barrella because basically the Inter players were not available for the first game. And then here comes Barrella, who for me has been one of the best midfielders in the world this year. Really creative, really young, exciting player has been a key reason why. Inter is leading for the uh, for of course the Scudetto this season, but I thought the midfield was very good, and you had uh, Sassuolo's Locatelli in the first game of the international window looking very good as well. So it's not just the quality; it's the depth, it's the youth, and we're game to game. Why I believe this is a team that is tournament tested and tournament built is you can switch out based on matchups, based on health or form or fitness during the course of a of a long tournament. I love the depth where you could have Locatelli running things. We don't even see Jorginho in this international window. He's going to be a big part of this club going forward as well. Yeah, absolutely. Francisco, um, let me ask you something. Uh, John touched on it. You know, uh, our own Jonathan Johnson also said it. Italy is a, a pretty, you know, you could say a, a favor to definitely make a good run in the European Championship. How confident are you of this summer for this Italian side? Well, I, I think they're going to be uh, semifinals. They're going to be in the end for sure. This is uh, probably uh, a team that, that, that probably has like three World Cups together. They can, they can uh, raise those kids to be monsters like they used to be. Uh, but also, you got, you got teams or other nations. And the one that get my attention, uh, besides France, because the talent that France has is a stupid. Uh, it's Portugal. Uh, Portugal is probably doing the same thing because everything was around Ronaldo, and now it's they have other players, young players, and then and, and they are really good players. So it's 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 like a it's similar to what Italy is doing. It's not based on Del Piero or Totti or Baggio or no. It's like a little bit of everything. So when you talk about Varela and Locatelli. I believe that's the future. Well, besides Berratti, Berratti is like the best there. But those two, especially, you have those two little guys with the big guys, Locatelli, and he makes uh, it's it's very dynamic and it's different of what Italy used to be. Different, 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 control the ball, different. No, now they more explosive, they more faster, dynamic, and it's great. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, you mentioned something about Portugal. They always remind me of the Red Sox. Uh, they're kind of annoying and always, always get to the final or make a good run. Obviously not recently, but it's amazing, John, that they're always there. Uh, you know, they're the defending European champions, first of all. And it's not just Cristiano Ronaldo now. Now you have Bruno Fernandes, of course, uh, and so many other key players. Who's the biggest opponent, do you think, to Italy's if they're going to make a good run? a great question i it it may well be portugal of course portugal benefited so much from that half of the euro bracket last time around remember it was it was a much clearer path for them to the final than it was on the other side which of course italy was part of and then uh, germany knocked them out i also look at at england i I think england with their young talent mason mount of course in the midfield uh and their creativity up front i I think they've got a very good group of, of young players again similar 
to to Italy. I, I you think back at, at the the last time England and Italy met in the World Cup, I think it was back in 2014. There's almost going to be no one from that match who is who is in a competitive match between those two nations here going forward, whether it's in 2021, 2022. So I look at England as being a very dangerous team during the course of the Euros coming up and into the World Cup as well. Yeah, no, you have to agree with that as well. All right, let's switch gears for a second. I want to talk Serie A, okay? All right, boys, you got to remember something, as you all know this. In the 90s, if you're a young fan, you need to know this. In the 90s, I mean, obviously, the Premier League was just beginning. You know, uh, La Liga was doing their thing, but Serie A was where it was at. Ronaldo Fenomeno, Gabriel Batistuta, Roberto Baggio, George Way. I mean, this was just a ridiculous league. And then for a while it kind of lost a little bit of its uh, sexiness, right? Just because other players went somewhere else. Uh, the quality, obviously, there were issues of the pitch as well. But now, Serie A, I think, it's back again. CBS Sports have the rights. We're going to show it all on Paramount Plus from next season. And Francisco, I'm reading here, obviously, uh, John sent me a photo from your Instagram. You chatting to uh, Alessandro Del Piero. You're a big Juventus fan. But... It's, uh, it's been good for your boys for a while, but probably not this season, Francisco. Do you still think there's a hope here, or do you see Inter Milan winning it? And talk to me about Serie A. What do you think? Well, re realistically, it's, uh, I think Inter is going to win because they had uh, they rest more. Uh, Juventus play a lot, a lot of games. Now they are out of the, uh, the Champions League. But, you know, when, when everybody criticized Juventus, they, they've been winning night time. The last nine years, so it's it's like they've been doing everything. So it's time for other teams to do to do the same thing. And then we want to see Inter, we want to see Milan, we want to see Napoli, we want to see the Lazio there was in the nineties, the Fiorentina. They, they you need to uh, raise the culture, and and um, I think it happens like in baseball uh, when Sosa and Maguire save baseball or. Or, or give excitement to people. I think Ronaldo being in the Serie A just put the put the culture on the map again. The league was it, it's been amazing. Um, uh, let's not talk about the results in Europe with all the Italian teams. That it's been it's been bad, but but they end up right out again. They're not like the fifth best league in the world. No, now they're the number three. So they are doing the right thing. Yeah. John, chime in here. I know that you want to talk a lot about your Serie A here. I love it, Luis and Francisco. Of course, it's going to be probably the first time in about 10 years that it's 1-2 for the two clubs from Milan, which, which is a really big deal. It makes the league stronger top to bottom. With all due respect to Francisco's favorite team, Juve, who, by the way, are like the Yankees of Serie A, if you will, when you consider not just the color scheme and the uniform design, but they are, they are the Yankees in terms of winning. It makes, for about a, it. <laughs> it, it makes for a better and more compelling league when there's more competitive balance, which there is right now. And I, I agree that Ronaldo coming there really stamped a, a real excitement and the imprimatur of what he means around world football, but also I'm excited that we're going to see Weston McKinney, uh, certainly with Juventus for many years to come. Now, one of the great American stars, I believe the best all around American player over the last 12 months has been Weston McKinney. So he is playing in Italy. Uh, you consider as well the, the really stylish football that Conti's team is playing with Inter. Uh, you think about what Lukaku has done there. Uh, Barella with just the, the great creativity he's playing in midfield right now. Milan, uh, Kessie has had such a great season for them. So we're seeing some new stars who are from certainly different countries around the world, not just Italy. I thought it was fascinating that we saw at Atalanta with their form last season. Guys, I don't think Atalanta in the previous campaign had a goal scored by an Italian player. They were all from various countries around the world. It was so cool. You saw uh, Muriel and Zupata there, of course, the two Colombians. So it's a great stylish form of football now. We're seeing more creativity. And this is the best we have seen Serie A, I believe, in certainly more than a decade and maybe even a generation. Yeah, absolutely. But one thing, what, one yeah, thing ahead, that Frank. we can... I'm sorry, but one thing we cannot forget is, okay, we talk about Ronaldo and the impact in the Serie A, but I think what really changed uh, Italian soccer was Gasperini and the way he, he handled Atalanta. Atalanta showed the world that it's not about the Italians 
are, are not only different. It's about different. This guy attacks and attacks and attacks. And he doesn't care if he receives five goals, he's going to score six. So I would love to see in some point uh, Gasperini with a really uh, a, a good team. I, I'm not saying Atalanta is not a good team, but a team with money. That, 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 that he can put that philosophy in players or like Bielsa used to say, the best defense is attack, attack, attack. Yeah, no, you're 100% correct. Uh, I am such a fan of Gasperini and it would be interesting to see what happens. And by the way, the Atalanta story, as John and Fran uh, discussed, is incredible. I mean, their budget is kind of the same of a championship team in England. They don't have the money that like, you know, Juventus has or even other teams across Europe. And they're basically the football equivalent, the soccer equivalent of Mike Tyson's quote, everybody has a plan until you punch them in the face. They just want to punch you in the face. They don't care what you're doing. Like you said, Fran, it's, you know, you score two, we're going to score four. It's amazing. And I love Sassuolo as well. Sexy Sassuolo. I love the way they play. They're just a, it's a fun league. All right, quick, give me a quick answer here. All right, let's begin with you, John. Who's going to win Serie A? Inter Milan. I think Antonio Conte is going to win the championship uh, this year. The Scudetto, uh, their first Scudetto since 2010. Yeah. Fran? I think, yeah. I think Inter is going to win and Juventus is going to win number two. Interesting. Indeed. Yeah, I think AC Milan is dropping a little bit. By the way, we've been getting reports from Sky Italia that Donnarumma is rejecting AC Milan's uh, latest contract offer. So one of the most exciting goalkeepers out there. So that's, a, that's one to watch. Uh, hey, everybody, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, opening day, baby. Opening day. Stay right here. Welcome back, everybody. Que golazo here with the great John Morosi, here with the great Francisco Cervelli. All right, opening day on Thursday. My Yankees against the Blue Jays. There's so many good games happening. John, let's begin with you. How excited are you about this day? I cannot wait, my friends. It is uh, El Dia Inaugural, as you would call it uh, in, in Spanish around uh, Major League Baseball. But I, I love it. It's, it's a special day. It's a holiday and obviously a very different feel than it was last year on opening day where we had no fans anywhere. And here in Major League Baseball, as this year begins, we will, he we will have at least some fans everywhere. Uh, it seems around 20, 30 percent is about the norm. And obviously we understand uh, COVID-19 is, is affecting different areas of the country at, at different rates at the moment. And so a lot of those decisions are led by that. But uh, just to be able to have fans again. Again, Francisco, I just I cannot wait. Uh, you know what it's like around the ballpark on an opening day. Both of you do. And it's just a, it's exciting, Luis, just to have that moment where you hear the anthems and you think about what we've all been through the last year. It's, it's going to be a very emotional day for me and for everybody. Yeah, Francisco, I'm sure you agree. Yeah, yeah. Opening day is the day that you have the butterflies in your stomach. It's crazy. Um it, it, it's, it's something very special, like the whole week. But the first game always is, is amazing. And uh, the fact that they're going to have people in the stands, it's, it's, a, it's great because last year was a little miserable. You know, you have to find adrenaline from I don't know where, like the music or, or just the love of baseball. But the fact that you're going to have at least 2,000 fans is, is special. What's it like as a player, Francisco, like during that time? Do you think uh, what, what, what was that? I know you obviously know exactly what it feels like to enter uh, and, and really just, you know, just really experience the atmosphere of being a player. But like during the pandemic, as you both of you mentioned, like it's so different, like every other sport. Right. But more so, I feel I, I think here's where you get a real connection with baseball and soccer, where like it's an arena is a little different. I think you can like create some atmosphere and obviously it's not the same, but it can give you a sort of uh, energy that can help you with the adrenaline that you talked about, about baseball and soccer. I feel when you don't have those people there, it's really tricky. And with baseball, even so as well, because it's such a, it's not just uh, an athletic, you know, uh, endeavor. It's a game of chess and you need like, you need all those fans. What's it? What, what do you make of it as a player? Like, what does that, what does that mean when, when, when you're doing this during a pandemic? Well, it, it was, uh, last year was challenging, uh, especially me as a catcher. You know, I, I believe all my teammates, they feed on the catcher because they, they are watching me. So I, I believe it's not only about the fans. It's the fact that you cannot, uh, let your teammates down. So your attitude is all about attitude. 
Mm. Um, it, it's it's not even a job. It's the game, the game of baseball. You do it because you love the game, and then the the your body language is so important for your teammates and for the dynamic of the game. So, um, my mom always told me, baseball is baseball, no matter what it, uh, where you play. If it's Italy, if it's Peru, if it's Venezuela, that's the the game that you love. So go go play with all everything you got. Yeah. No, beautiful. Go ahead, John. Sure. I, I think one thing that to me, and, and both of you know this from having seen games at the Yankee Stadium, of course, Francisco having been on the field for them. The one thing I missed last year when I would cover games at the ballparks was that reminder that you would always get from the crowd of when the big moments are coming. And Francisco knows that at, y- at Yankee Stadium, two strikes every time the 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 crowd starts to chant and cheer when a Yankee pitches on the mound about ready to strike out somebody. And it's, that is like that at Yankee stadium more so than any other ballpark in the country. And so to hear that, it, it really, it gives me goosebumps when I think about what that Yankee stadium crowd tells you it's part of the soundtrack of experiencing a game there, as both of, you know, and, and just those sounds and, and, and the way the crowd would react. And Francisco certainly remembers this whenever Mariano would come into a game what the reaction would be as, as enter Sandman played over the loudspeaker. I'm getting goosebumps again, just describing it, what it sounded like in the press box. Yankee stadium sounds like no other place in the baseball world. And I can't wait for it to sound that way again. Well said, my friend. All right, let me do a quick round here for both of you. Just quick round. Okay. Give me uh before, before I give you the big question ahead of this new season. All right. Give me a team to watch out for. Obviously we know about the big boys, but give me a team to watch out for. Let's begin with you again, John. What, what, give me one team to watch out for. Well, I'm going to mention a team here, Luis, that Francisco knows very well. And that's the Marlins because of their young pitching, the starting rotation of that group, Sixto Sanchez, Sandy Alcantara, Pablo Lopez, Elisa Hernandez. They've got a lot of great names there, a lot of great arms to begin that rotation. I believe the Marlins are ready to make noise in what I think is going to be the most competitive division, top to bottom in all of baseball, the NLE. So, Francisco, it's one of your former teams who have all benefited from your leadership there uh, in, in the last couple of years. They're going to, I think, take a huge step forward this year. Yeah, I think they're great. Uh, those, those starting guys are phenomenal. They and they're young. They just they just want to learn. They just want good things. Uh, offensively, they uh, they really good. Aguilar and that lineup is special. Now they got Dubois, um, and they got a lot of people. They can hit the ball and hard. But I, it's one thing that probably no one pay attention. But it's happening again in this organization. It's Kansas City. I think they doing exact the same thing they did when they won the World Series. They kept the, the young talent, they had some veterans there, and they and they let those guys grow together. And when you open your eyes, they got monsters again. This team can hit a lot. They can really hit because I played against them two years ago, and those guys can hit. Now, they working on the starting pitchers. The bullpen is really nice. But the organization is doing it again. Probably they don't gonna be there this year, but the next uh, three, uh, well, next year and the next three, it's gonna be Kansas City again. I'm telling you. Ooh, I love it. I love it. All right, let's finish off with this then. All right, just you know, very gut instinct. Obviously, don't worry about the analysis too much, as we haven't even seen opening day yet. But who, what would be your World Series, John Morosi? I've got the Chicago White Sox winning the American League. I love their talent, stacked lineup, their fortified rotations. I've got the White Sox winning the American League in the NL. I'm going to go with the Atlanta Braves, a, one, a, a team that Francisco knows well, too. I look at the Braves. They almost beat the Dodgers last year. So I've got the Braves over the White Sox in the World Series. Wow. Francisco, tell me that you have my Yankees in there. Come on now. Yeah, I I I, I think uh, in in AL is gonna be Yankees, but, but probably they have to stop complaining about what they don't have and focus on what they have. I think they have too much. They have enough. They have more than anything in um, in MLB, even in the farm. They complain too much about the starting guys that we don't have this, we don't have that. 
No, you have everything. And then if you look downstairs, they they load it. They load it with with good arms and good hitters and 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 everything. I think uh, they're gonna be there. And of course, the Dodgers again. I think they finally felt how is to win a World Series. So now they know they're more confident, and it's 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 gonna be easier for them. MLB wants a Yankees Dodgers World Series, I think. Uh, and by the way, watch out for my boy and your boy, Gleyber Torres. I feel he's going to have a monster season. He's going to be, he look good. He's looking good uh, in spring. And I think he's going to have a great season. All right. Well, I, this has been amazing. We've talked the beautiful game. We've talked my beautiful Yankees with two absolute legends. Uh, before we say goodbye, some final thoughts about anything that you want to bring up that we didn't bring up. John Morosi, we'll begin with you. Anything that you want to bring up as we say goodbye? Sure, I appreciate it. A couple quick points. Number one, I'll say this. One of my favorite things about when you would go into a clubhouse uh, on a Champions League day, and Francisco knows this, we'd be going there for interviews before the game into the locker room. And if it was a Champions League day, Forget about getting any interviews because the Champions League games would be on the TVs. The players would all be rooting, usually a lot of Barca fans or Real Madrid fans there, and, and that'd be it. Like, you would get no work done before the game because everybody's watching Champions League. And the other thing, Francisco, I wonder if you could share a quick story because there was a game that we were doing, and, and by the way, Luis, whenever I would see Francisco in the clubhouse when I was covering him with the Pirates, we'd go in there for a national game on a Saturday. We would always chat in Italian on Friday before we talk about Serie A. We talk about the Italian national baseball team on which Francisco plays as well. And there was one game and we talk about why Francisco has such an amazing career. He would always defend his pitchers and his teammates. So I had on my notes for this game, it was against the Cardinals right before the All-Star game, 2015, I think. I had in my notes, I was going to talk about Francisco's family roots in Italy. I was going to talk about him loving Juventus. And then I looked up And Francisco was getting ejected from the game because he was defending A.J. Burnett about a, a bad call on Mark Reynolds, Francisco. You remember this? There was an early in the game, Francisco was very passionate defending his pitcher. And I always said, I, I wish I had a chance to tell the Juventus story on the air, but I was proud of Francisco always standing up for his pitcher and his teammates. So I, I wonder if you remember that story too. Well, um, yeah, yeah, because it wasn't a strikeout. And yes. the fire called foul ball, and it wasn't even close. <laughs> He's still and mad about pitch, it. <laughs> next pitch was a home run. That, that was my first time that I got uh, ejected. Uh, kick yeah. out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but look, I grew up with that philosophy in Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela is like a, catch, a catcher's factory, like Puerto Rico. But I grew up with the philosophy of catchers put red carpet to the pitcher. Catchers protect the pitchers no matter what. When something bad happened, it's the catcher's fault. When something good happened, it was a, uh, a good thing about the pitcher. It's, it's, it's never about you. And, um, and, and I grew up with that, and I played my 18 years doing the same thing, and the pitchers appreciate that. And, and, and uh, it's amazing just to be a protector. It's, it's, it's my job, and it's, I think it's a every, uh, every catcher's job. And uh, the other part is... Uh, I'm very excited what's happening with the soccer in the United States. If they are, if they are able to uh, fusion these two leagues, Mexico and the United States, probably in 10 years, we're going to have a very powerful league. As, like, like, because I always believe Americans never going to do anything just to do it. They're going to do it because they want to be the best. And they, do it, and they are doing it the right way. Pandemic. You know, it, it's in a step back, but just people pay attention and support because it's, it's really fun, especially see the fans jumping around. I went to Atlanta. I go to Atlanta United games all the time because my friend, Jose Martinez, plays there. And the atmosphere is like Europe. So people start feeling it, and it's, I'm very excited about what's going to happen. Love it. Yeah, Joseph Martinez is going to be part of our show very soon. So I'm very excited about that. John, I know that you wanted to bring something else before we say goodbye. 
Sure. I just want to make one point about just how uh, what an honor it is, Luis, to be on on this show with you. I want to make this point too, Francisco, about Luis. He does this podcast every single day. And you think about it, there's a lot of weekly podcasts out there. This is every day. And my man brings it every day. I, I love it. Uh, the, the, the way that we follow soccer around the world, you're, you're bringing more people into the family, Luis. I love how you're doing it. And uh, I can't wait till we have a chance to talk some Serie A again here. Hopefully the three of us can all get together again. Absolutely, John. I really appreciate it. Well, I, I, I do exactly what Francisco said about protecting your pitcher. That's what I do about this game. I protect it. I want to celebrate the hell out of it. But this <laughs> has been so much fun. Uh, John Morosi, thank you so much, my friend. Piacere mio. Francisco Cervelli, an absolute honor. And whenever you want to send me your World Series ring, I'm always here. So don't worry about it. Well, that's the only ring I got. So I will, I will, <laughs> I will do it. But... <laughs> Hey, look, um, I had really uh, a lot of fun. Thank you for the opportunity, and I hope we can do it. But everybody in the same room, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of this soon thing, you know? I know, man. <laughs> hey, you're Italian and you're South American. Trust me, I get it. I get it. I need to, I need to use my hands when I talk. <laughs> hey, 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 let's go. <laughs> John Morosi, Francisco Cervelli, thank you so much. Everybody, make sure. Make sure that you follow them on social media. And of course, keep listening to Gago Lasso and everybody else's content. Thanks so much, everybody. Hey, everybody. I want to thank John Morosi and Francisco Cervelli for joining me today. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts. Please leave a rating and review and drop us a question. We'll hopefully answer it in the show. We're also on Spotify, on Stitcher, on YouTube, and cbsports.com, and so much more. Have a great day great day.